So listen, guys, you got to get your money right. And when you get some money, you're going to buy stuff. I think you should buy books. I think that's the main thing you should invest in. Education, knowledge. That's why I want to share with you book of the week. I read this book a long time ago and it had a, a really big impact on me. But I feel like every time I read it, I learn something new. And it's not because I missed it the first time. And it's not because the book changed, because it didn't, it's I changed. Like sometimes when you reread a book you've already read, it hits different because now you have more information. So this book is called The Road Less Stupid by Keith Cunningham. I don't know if this is true what I'm about to tell you, but legend has it that the rich dad and rich dad poor dad was Keith Cunningham. Legend has it. This is who Rob Kiyosaki was talking about. I've heard that from somebody who I trust. It's about how to think in a way that will help you become more successful, but not necessarily what you think. So this is something that I tell people all the time. Success is less about hitting big home runs and it's about avoiding the mistakes that can knock you off your path. Because in order to succeed in life, a lot of times I can tell when somebody's gonna fail when they ask me questions like, yo, what's the one thing you did? Or what's the trick or what's the hack? Of course you can find things that will help give you an advantage, but it's almost never one thing you did and you just hit a big home run and next thing you know you're rich and famous. It's almost never like that. I want you to think about the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is one of the biggest canyons on earth. It's really impressive if you've ever seen it in person. And it was built slowly by the Colorado River going through it every day, every day. And it eroded the ground and made this huge canyon over a long period of time. Consistent effort over a long period of time is how it made this big canyon. That's what success is like. In fitness, what's the one thing you need to do? No, 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 I didn't look like this one day. Two decades of me not missing workouts, showing up, working out five to seven days a week, making sure I hit my macros, track my macros every day, keeping a scale in my bag, tracking my macros every day for 20 years. That's where success comes from. However, even if you know that, one of the main things that can knock you off your path is making big mistakes. See, most of you guys will succeed if you avoid the big mistakes, the real big mistakes, because some of them will either knock you off your path, slow you down, or to stop you completely. If you have a bunch of babies in your 20s, that's gonna be difficult to succeed in those circumstances because now you got to deploy all the capital to the kids, their moms, and then time as well. If you go to prison, there's a lot of things that can knock you off your path. So what this book is about, The Road Less Stupid, is actually about thinking through your decisions. And Keith provides a framework that he uses to think through. One of the main things he says is, when he's thinking about should he do something, he first thinks, what's the upside of me making this decision? We're all pretty good at that. Like, we all get excited about the upside. But then he thinks, okay, so what's the downside? Can he deal with the downside? Is the third question he asks me. What's the upside? What's the downside? And can he deal with the downside? And if the answer is yes, then maybe he goes for it. And I thought that was a good framework. I kind of modified it for me. I don't have to think about what the upside is because I wouldn't even be considering it if it wasn't an upside. I think what's the worst that can happen, the absolute worst that can happen if I do this? Can I handle it? What can I do to prevent that from happening? It's a framework I call offensive pessimism. If you watch the video with me interviewing Ryan Holiday years ago, I gave him the framework of <laughs> offensive pessimism. And I said, Ryan, you can put that in one of your books. And he said, yeah, I might. I think he's just waiting for the right book. Like he ain't wrote the right book yet to put in that. Once he has the right content, I think he's gonna add it. Anyway, offensive pessimism. What's the worst that can happen? Can I handle it? And then what can I do to prevent it? That's my modification of Keith's framework, but I like Keith's too. And I highly suggest you read this book. Another thing Keith talks about second order consequences and third order consequences. What does that mean? Okay, a first order consequence is let's say you make a mistake, you go, you wanna work out today. Do you work out? No, you don't work out today. The first order consequence is it's just one day. That's what people say, ah, oh, it's just one day. It's just nothing, take it easy. Ah, oh, man, just one day. Cool, but that's only the first order consequence. What people don't take into account is the second order consequence. And the second order consequence of skipping today is now you're training yourself to be a bitch. Think about discipline. Discipline means you do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it, whether you feel like it or not. But discipline is like a muscle. So the only time you get an opportunity to build your discipline muscle is when you're in a situation when you have to do something you don't feel like it. That makes sense? That's the only time you have an opportunity to build your discipline muscle. And if you squander that opportunity and don't do it, yeah, in isolation, 
first order consequence, it doesn't really mean anything. But the second order consequence is, oh, you're not building your discipline muscle. Ah, but you're building something. You're building your bitch muscle. Because when you're supposed to do something, you don't feel like it. And then you don't do it. That's not being a G. If you're not a G, then what are you? That's right. A bitch. You're becoming a bitch because every time you do something, it becomes easier to do that thing again. Being a bitch is habit forming. And when you don't feel like working out today and you say, fuck it, I'm not going to go. The second order consequence is, oh, now you've made it harder to do what you're supposed to do when you're not supposed to do it because you've literally trained yourself to be a bitch. And God forbid you do something fun instead of going to the gym. You play video games or jerk off or something and you reward yourself for not doing what you're supposed to do. Now you're reinforcing negative behavior by giving yourself a reward. That would be like if the dog shit on the carpet and you gave him a treat for it and started petting him. That's exactly what you do to yourself. That's the second order consequence. What's the third order consequence? Oh, next time you don't feel like going to the gym, guess what? It's gonna be super easy for you to just not go because you've trained yourself. Not only did you train yourself, you reinforced it with a reward. You know what I'm saying? There's fourth order consequences. You fat. That's the, been the story of your motherfucking life. That's why you're not in shape now. You thought that one time, oh, I could take off today. You didn't think about the second order consequences, the third order consequences, and you're living the fourth order consequences of fat motherfucker. Everything counts. That was just an example, as elaborate as it was. But this is how you need to think about decisions each day. And Keith's book is one of one of the best books on the subject of actually how to think like a successful person. You know what I'm saying? Here's his Keith's framework. It's what's the upside? What's the downside? What can go wrong? We, most people, fucking losers, never even think about this shit because they're dummies. And can I live with the downside? I add the second one. What can I do to prevent it? But hey, Keith's got more money than me, man. So maybe you should listen to him. I just thought this was a good quote. He says, yeah, I was on a plane, so excuse the bad fucking image. But business is an intellectual sport. We make the mistake of believing we can somehow get rich or become successful by being passionate enough, wanting it desperately enough, visualizing it enough, believing we are entitled enough, being talented enough or working hard enough. It doesn't work that way. Passion and desire might produce willingness to persist, but do not teach us the skills and the tools needed to create success. The advice and book, Do What You Love and Money Will Follow, is as stupid as it is destructive. It's the same as saying, eat what you want and you'll be skinny. Fucking bars. I mean, he talks like a cranky old man sometimes. And I like that because that's what I'm evolving into. That's my final form, cranky old rich man. This is something I, I live by. All choices require a trade-off and a sacrifice. You can have almost anything you want, just can't have everything you want. Life is a game of trade-offs. You want a great family, you probably can't be an international playboy at the same time. You want to build a great business, you're probably not going to be the best video game player ever either. You know what I'm saying? You want to be in great shape. You're probably not going to be able to eat fucking cake and candies every day. Life's a game of trade-offs. It is something I think about all the time. But here's the thing about sacrifice and making trade-offs. It's a trade-off either way. Because if you don't sacrifice for your goal, then your goal becomes the sacrifice. So you're going to make a sacrifice either way. There's a trade-off no matter what you do. If you want to play video games all night, that's cool. You're sacrificing something that you could be doing to move yourself closer to your goal. And if you decide to do something closer to your goal, then you're probably sacrificing video games. Or That's just an example. But that's life. Life is a game of trade-offs. You got to decide which trade-offs you want to make. This is a lesson that kind of, I just, this might not be as applicable to you, but it hit real close to home. Business success is depending on who you hire and who you don't fire. Yeah, that's a lesson I learned, learned the hard way. I don't know. I can't speak highly of this book enough. I think you all should get it. The link is in the description. I have the physical book, but I also have it on my Kindle. That's how you know I like a book, man. Go ahead and check that out. The Road Less Stupid by Keith Cunningham, who might be legend as it. The Rich Dad from Rich Dad Poor Dad.